I was asked to do a, an overview of the online course putting clinical practice. So I've put together just a few slides to to summarise uh, what to expect and to whet your appetite a little. So uh, looking at the, the post I sent out, the ad that I sent out, there are 10 uh, session items, each with an hour long YouTube talk uh, with a task on the end. And that's in order that the, the interaction with me and uh, participants can be uh, flipped a little bit. You can have a look at all the theoretical questions and issues and practical aspects. And then uh, during the task, uh, carry out an activity based on your own subject needs, send everything to me, and then we meet in a live discussion um, to, uh, to go through some feedback and to develop your task ideas, your lesson ideas uh, as a result. So the whole thing is a collection of input tasks, feedback and development to feed into your own teaching and learning needs at school. About 20 hours altogether. First of all, defining CLIL. So we look at each of the three aspects, the concepts, procedures and the language. Much as we wrote about it in the book uh, for OUP, uh, putting CLIL into practice with lots of practical examples. Uh, we look at language and its three layers. We look at subject specific language, general academic language, and peripheral language and getting the level right, identifying language, embedding language within activities. Uh, first of all, subject specific terminology or words you can't do without. All aspects of um, managing the weight of uh, the, the, the content specific terminology that your students have to deal with in a variety of ways. We look at um, working with multimedia inputs, uh, so everything that's not text, uh, poster, video, animation, realia, um, objects, um, and exploiting content structures. Uh, so how you can see how the ideas are organized in whatever it is you're using to present uh, content and use that structure to help your students process that input. This is multimedia input. Similarly, looking at text, we, we look at different types of text and how they're structured, how the ideas, again, are organized within linear text so that you can lift out that uh, structure of the ideas and help your students process text by using that organizational framework uh, to read through text. All sorts of text, text like this that look uh, incomprehensible at first glance, but on further um, investigation, you can begin to see patterns and we'll look at techniques for, for uh, investigating and identifying patterns in text. Supporting writing, we look at a lot of different uh, instruments for getting students writing uh, in your subjects. Uh, we look at frame creation, substitution tables, simple sentence structure support ideas, and many, many more. So you'll have a toolbox to dip into uh, and work with your own students based on the examples that you see in the course. Um, speaking of course, we look at uh, oral production, again using conceptual structures to get students uh, speaking to, with each other. So they speak over an information gap using the same conceptual structures, but they have different bits of information and they have to share them. Here using the wonderful materials from the award-winning Tic Tag uh, World CLIL uh, version of this uh, frame. And I'll use a lot of examples from there because uh, the, the material is excellent. Uh, it won an Elton's for uh, innovation in teaching materials. We look at general academic language, this, this invisible language of the curriculum. Um, and I, I let everybody have a copy of the, the language audit that I did. Uh, I've been compiling and still adding to which refers directly to curriculum descriptors, curriculum objectives, and uh, makes explicit the language demands of curriculum uh, objectives. You can see a small selection here. And we put that in example tasks, in contextualized activities from uh, lesson material and uh, sequences. We look at planning clear lessons. We look at, uh, you know, planning types of lessons. We look at general principles of input to output type lessons. 
and more specific type lessons such as laboratory based lessons and how you can examine language demand at different stages of lessons. Uh, and again, I'll use a lot of video uh, input as example because I've got lots of uh, printed lesson uh, plans that we can we can pick apart and have a look at how they they create a nice flow. Uh, and we'll ask a lot of questions about uh, who's doing what and what language is needed at different stages of lessons and all these templates you'll get uh, to help you produce plans. And lastly, we look at projects, networks and materials. So these are kind of tying loose ends together, uh, as well as offering a rich collection of opportunities and possibilities for teachers outside the classroom in other areas. Many projects I've worked on myself. Uh, today I was working on Trash World with my juniors group and we were investigating waste around the school. We were picking up litter, sorting it into different materials uh, and thinking about how we can use alternatives. So there, uh, my juniors were looking at uh, pollution, reducing pollution, and materials and their uses and what can and cannot be recycled. And, and that's just an example. We can examine all sorts of uh, project examples, such as investigating genetics and heredity. That's the alarm to tell me to stop talking. Uh, get in touch if you've got any questions. I'm running sessions whenever there's um, interest to, to get one going. Uh, get in touch.